This is the expansion for Victoria 2 called House Divided. It's an expansion that uh, makes more depth to gameplay, adds things that people have been asking for and making it to a much better game. Victoria 2 at its heart is a political economical game so it's natural when we're doing an expansion that we're focusing on making the economical game even more deep. One example there is the possibility of investing in other countries when you're a great power. Let's say you're playing France and you think that Belgium is more important to be closer tied to you. Instead of just in the original game when you put diplomatic influence, getting them into your sphere and while they're in your sphere, you get the economical benefits. We've decided to increase this interactivity and make it into a more fun gameplay. What we've done here is that when you play France you, or any greater power, you can start building factories in non-greater powers. The more factories you have built in percentage wise compared to others in a country means that you get a much larger share of the economy from that country when you have them in your sphere. The politics in Victoria 2 were is probably the most in-depth politics system ever in a game. But we've decided to take this even one step further. Now in this expansion you can manipulate how you want the actual voters to believe in. You can go to a state and say we want to encourage liberal parties or encourage conservative parties or encourage socialist parties. And then the party loyalties, the parties of that ideology will start growing and become stronger. And then people will vote from inertia because they vote what their friends and what their fathers have voted for. But we've and also that when, it's, when a party wins election in a state, they will get a slight bigger boost in loyalty to that party in that state. So you'll have this weird, or not weird, but cool things like a solid democratic south in the US and liberals in big cities and then socialists appearing when there are factory workers. And you'll see a different political, cli political landscape of the countries. In Victoria 2 we had rebel factions. Rebel factions were basically pops joining together into a faction and then when they got strong enough they turned into a military uprising. What we've done here instead is to make this more in-depth and more flavor so that it's not either a, a military uprising or nothing. Here we have popular movements which is the new world since they're not just rebels, they're people agitating for reform or for the independence of a country. But if they're agitating for a reform, they're working inside the system at first. So that you'll see this reform getting more and more popular because of this movement there. But you can also try to suppress movements by using your uh, lack of press freedom and uh, good bureaucrats and policemen to basically crack down and make sure that people are not uh, as much attached to that reform movement. But the more time you crack down on a uh, movement, the, the stronger their anti-society bias will become and eventually the, a party or a, a movement in a society where it's also uh, not that much freedom will be able to become radical and when a movement is radical you get the military uprising like in Russia when you get the communists rising up and making a coup in 1917. There's not always a need to suppress movement sometimes you want to accept what you want to do. Let's say you have a movement that goes for a political freedom like the vote it might be even better long term for you to just let this movement get as powerful as possible get as many people as possible to support that movement and then you enact it when the conservatives have become upset enough about it then you can enact it and make a lot of people happy so it's about managing when do you want to enact reforms should you enact a reform as soon as you can or should you make it even more likely that more people are backing it then more people will be happy with it. Or should you take a risk that it's actually a revolution over a simple matter like the vote? 
There's a lot of different ways to play Victoria too. And some people love playing it with a democratic state and having as much freedom as possible and letting people do vote whatever they want in and then it roll with the punches and have a large big industry that's fully funded by free capitalists. That's a lot of input and output. I and there's also those people that prefer a very, very autocratic state where you don't really uh, let the people have much say and try to crack down on anything and have perfect control over what, what the economy should be like. And there's the middle way of those people that sometimes let elections go and sometimes not. It's all up to you and you can forge the society you want in Victoria. One of the things with the military system in Victoria too is that it grows quite kind of unwieldy when you're uh, playing a big country, especially late in the game when you may have like hundreds of units or thousands of units. You're recruiting them, you're mobilizing them, you have to give them manual orders. What we've done in this expansion is to add a concept called rally points. Basically, whenever a unit is built, it would automatically start marching to the closest rally point and then merge with any unit there. Of course, merging is optional, you don't have to have to merge, but all of this makes it much, much easier to mobilize in a big war.